In the last video, we talked about how to find the volume under a surface over a rectangle in the xy plane using um, double integrals. In this video, we'll actually talk about how do you set up your double integral, um, how do you put your bounds in, and how do you evaluate. So this is double integrals over rectangles, example one. To calculate an iterated integral, or in other words, the double integral over some region r of f of x, y, dy, dx, we can say that this equals the integral from a to b of the integral from c to d of f of x, y, dy, dx. So notice the x bounds are listed on the first integral, and the dx is listed um, last, so the outside variable goes with the outside integral. And then the dy is um, listed first, and the integral from c to d, the y bounds, is listed second. So it's kind of nested. You do the inner integral first with respect to whatever variable is listed in, inside. So first, the area of a cross-section, a of x equals the integral from c to d of f of x, y, dy, is computed by integrating with respect to y, holding x constant. So just like with our partial derivatives, we hold the other variable as a constant and just integrate with respect to the variable that is listed in the dy or dx part. So here's our x, y, z axes, and say I have this rectangle in the x, y plane, and um, the y bounds are c to d, the x bounds are a to b, and then above it, there's this surface, and this surface is f of x, y. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of projecting the rectangle up onto the surface, and I'm finding the volume of that region that's created. So first, I find the slice, the area of a slice parallel to the y-axis. So when I'm evaluating, that's what I'm doing. So um, then the volume is computed by adding up all of these cross-sections, resulting in the volume equals the integral from a to b of a of x, which is what I got from evaluating that inner integral, dx. So this little slice is my a of x. And basically by taking the integral along the x, I'm adding all of those up. Okay, so let's actually go through an example. We want to calculate the volume under the plane z equals 4 minus x minus y over the rectangle R, where x goes from 0 to 2 and y goes from 0 to 1. So in your textbook, they provided this, um, this nice picture of what's going on. We have the plane z equals 4 minus x minus y, and then down in the xy plane, we have the rectangle that we were given, x going from 0 to 2, y going from 0 to 1. And we're going to evaluate it just like we did, um, just like we discussed on the last slide, where we find our, um, the area of our y cross section, so a of x equals the integral from y equals 0 to y equals 1 of our plane, 4 minus x minus y dy. And then we'll add all of those up to find the total volume of the region. So our volume is going to be a double integral of our function 4 minus x minus y dy goes from y goes from 0 to 1 so I'm going to put the dy and then on the inner integral I'll put 0 to 1. Then I have dx and that's on the outside so on the outer integral I'll put 0 to 2. Now actually evaluating, um, I want to work from the inside out. 
And so I'm going to take this inner integral from 0 to 1 of 4 minus x minus y dy and evaluate that first. So since it's with respect to y, I treat x as a constant. And so I'm going to get 4y minus xy, because x is just a constant, minus 1 half y squared, evaluated from y equals 0 to y equals 1. And now I plug in the numbers for the y. So I get 4 minus x minus 1 half minus 0 minus 0 minus 0. So lower bound with y equals 0, I just get 0. Um, but I do have to evaluate it just in case I had something that was non-zero. So this is 7 halves minus x. Now this is my a of x. So that's the area of each cross section. Now to find the total volume, I'm going to do the integral of that area with respect to x. So my volume is the integral from 0 to 2 of 7 halves minus x dx, which is 7 halves x minus 1 half x squared evaluated from 0 to 2. So I get um, 7 halves times 2 minus 1 half times 2 squared and then my lower bound gives me a 0, so minus 0. So this tells me that the volume is 5 cubic units. So remember, when setting up your integral, you always want to work from the inside out. So if you put the dy first, then your y bounds need to be on the inner integral. And then if you put your um, dx last, or on the outside, then your bounds for x have to be on the outer integral. And then evaluating, you always work from the inside out.